coming to get you, Barbara. The Fear Central Radio Show. Warning, our content may include spoilers and is intended for mature audiences. Hey, fellow horror fans, welcome to the Fear Central Radio Show. I am your host, Mike, and joining me this week... Heather. Katie. Chris. Paul. All right, so we are here. And Chad in the background. Chad's in the background. Say hey. Say hey. Hey, oh. oh. <laughs> we we are in 2019. Yes, yes, we are. We are. <laughs> Finally, yes, back in swing of things. Yes. Um, for those of you keeping up with the Facebook page, you obviously know that one or many of us at any given point in the last three weeks has been sick or uh. ill or dying or it has not been living fun. dead or the flu has <clears throat> run rampant through my family. We're all right. dying in the Sylvia Plath sense. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, but we are back, and um, we have now had a chance to get to come together and have come up with some plans moving forward. So mm-hmm. we are uh, now going to be coming out with new shows on Fridays. Yes. As opposed to Mondays. We just throw it at the end of the week. It's Friday for you. It's not for us. Happy yeah. Friday, guys. <laughs> 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 That's chipperness. Yes, you must do the rest of this podcast in that voice. No, I will kill no. her. <laughs> I do Disney Prince as well. Uh, <laughs> Golly gee willikers, that sounds bad. Wow. Says the demon. <laughs> so, uh, moving forward, we've got, we're have got we going to be bringing back some things we we tried again uh, last season, uh, such as we're calling it, what, uh, Playcast now? Playcasting. Yeah. We're, well, let's, we're let's hope there's not a game system out there called that, so. Um, there's a dream. There's a dream Soldier Castle. Boy probably has one coming out, but okay. Disney's going to make him take it down. Or <laughs> take it down. <laughs> probably Disney too, but Nintendo will make him take it down next yeah. week. Okay. Oh yeah, okay. definitely. <laughs> okay, uh, so we're going to bring that back, which is where we will do uh, board type games, card games uh, type things as the show. Yes. Horror so, based. Uh, if, you're, as if, always. if you remember, we did uh, Escape the Room Werewolf Experience. Uh, we mm-hmm. did that one that's in front of you. Overkill. Yeah, Overkill, the Halloween slasher card game. Uh, we've got some new games that have come in and will be coming in. More games coming soon. So we've got that coming. Uh, we're also looking for people that have been uh, either created or have been in independent horror films. We'd like to start doing some more interviewing. Bring so, on the flesh. So if you've uh, if you're an independent film director that, or that's producer, horror movies we want, not porn. Yes, yes. Yeah, Just so you horror, know. yeah. Uh, uh, what do you call green room then? Oh wait, sorry, that was actually a horror movie. <laughs> yeah. We're not talking zombie strippers or anything. <laughs> oh, leave them alone. They're such nice girls. <laughs> uh, so shout out there if anybody has uh, directed, produced, acted in, or whatever in an independent film. Uh, we need your celluloid. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Makes a good beef jerky. <laughs> and this is why I never eat beef jerky. Ugh, okay. uh, so anyway, uh, give us a give us a shout uh, either on our Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever, mm-hmm. and uh, let us know. We'll get those things all lined up for a show. We can uh, if if you get the chance, send us said material, and we can watch it and then kind of review it and then have the interview and. That way we know what we're talking about, you know? Yeah. Don't just call us and be like, hey, I was in a movie. Great. Yeah, Chet. Why are you just going to call us? Yeah. You haven't seen your movie. Right? God, Chet. Chet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you, know who, you know who should call us? Not Chet. Not Chet. <laughs> Not Chet. Not Chet. But hashtag blame, uh, what's his name? Um, remember the Bob? film? He, oh. With the editing, we were like, oh, blame, oh, blame Kevin. Kevin. Hashtag blame Kevin. 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 Yes. yes, we Kevin, would love to talk to us. you, Kevin. <laughs> Hopefully your editing chops are better now, Kevin. <laughs> Be better, Kevin, or we'll drag your corpse. <laughs> Where are we dragging it? No. Through, no. The, through the chain. No, I don't know. I don't know. Through we'll the find chain. it. We'll, we'll, figure something out. we'll feed him through the wood chipper. Ooh, yeah. 
You know, every Look. bad movie he's done will just add a body part through the chipper. Yeah, I'm not cleaning that shit up. Mm. Who said you had to clean it up? Those, those college kids. I got ten bucks that'll fly about a foot and a half. <laughs> college kids just kill himself all over property. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this week, um, as coming back, uh, one of the big things we've seen a lot of information on over the last couple of months or so is yes. uh, Netflix's Bird Box. Yes. Oh, and God. so there's been a lot of speculation from a lot of people on what Netflix did to rip off other movies to make this one what they it is. They didn't I, rip it off. They just borrowed it without asking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and looking at the timeline, it's uh, so especially in the mo- in the months leading up to it, like after the trailer dropped, everybody was talking yeah. about it being similar to a quiet place because yes. Parents and kids in a survival situation, yeah. basically. That's basically it. But I've also heard some leaning toward, oh, it's just like the happening. Or The happening is a little bit more... Eh. A little closer. But, but honestly, if you're going to rip off the happening, you got no place to go but up. Nope. That's true. That's the true. happening is, a very, is one of my favorite movies to watch when I'm like sick or feeling bad, but it's not because I think it's a effective thriller <laughs> we call it a comedy at our house so <laughs> I, I love you both but you have very deep seated psychological yeah, issues well. we need to address mm-hmm. later that's, what? that's why they're here no. No. that's why they're here we need to tell the doctors to up your medication yeah. up it. y'all are Down plotting it. to kill me aren't you oh no honey <laughs> Not I plotting. already sent you the plans. Didn't you get them? You need to watch The Happening more. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you do. It is an infinitely <laughs> quotable movie. But, uh, <laughs> if we have no bees, we'll all die. I really wish you'd listen. I remember that. Science is very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> What's going to happen to the bees? Oh, my God. All right, so... You like hot dogs? <laughs> there's nothing wrong with hot dogs. <laughs> hot dogs are great. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now we are the uh, Twilight Zone. <laughs> funny you should say that. They're coming out Bo- with another one. Well, both The Happening and Bird Box do remind me of the Twilight a Zone. Yes, yeah. but they feel like a, a Twilight yeah, Zone now we're about storyline. To get Jordan, Jordan Peele Twilight Zone. Hosting. Yes. 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 On, uh, well, excited. no one's going to watch it because it's on CBS All Access. This is true because I'm nobody wants to pay the extra seven dollars. Excited to see it getting a little bit of oomph. But yeah. it won't because they're going to put it on a channel you can only pay for. I know. Yeah. That's so, the sad part about it. Yeah. But the good part about it is every time I've tried to get our kids to watch it, they go, oh, my God, Mom, the TV's broke. Mom, fix it. Mom, turn it off. I'm like, we're only five seconds into the movie. Jesus. <laughs> Why don't you turn the color off of every program for about a week and then like, men and wives can watch it? it. I yeah. really thought about doing that just to torment the hell out of them. You so go, what do you mean? You're going colorblind? Oh, my God. You poor babies. I will tell you that Sylvester Stallone's movie Oscar was much better in black and white. <laughs> it kind of fit better. <laughs> See, it's more one authentic. of my favorite ones. <laughs> just because it's so stupid. <laughs> We'll, you see, we'll see. That's that's my take on the happening. So there we go. It is very stupid. Go. I did watch it, although I but did what's love in the, box? the lawnmower. What the, in the lawnmower? Box. Yes. What's in the box, Heather? What's in the box? What, what, what the f- what's in the box? That's not a goofy movie. No. No. Although Oscar it goes to. <laughs> although that acting hasn't aged well in that particular scene no. except really. for Morgan Freeman because yeah. he gets yeah. a pass on everything that's true he's been God he's been the president I mean he's been he's John been Doe like has twice, the upper hand isn't he huh hmm? he's been God like twice in movies hasn't well he? there was More a sequel God. oh yeah, that's, yeah there was, that's why he was there was, there was Bruce and there was <laughs> Evan. Evan Evan you know because yeah. you gotta have Evan um, anyway, so who would like to, for those that have not watched it yet, give the premise of the box with the birds? The premise? Yeah. Basically, the birds can sense the creatures. What creatures? There's creatures? There's, There's creatures. Alien creatures. Is there a scene that you've never <laughs> seen. Well, technically, we don't know what they are. Yeah, exactly. You don't, yeah. you don't see them, but you so, can only them. see so, the wind. So actual, plot for pe- for, so actual plot for people who care. Movie, the bird box <laughs> stars... Uh, Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock. Yes, as a woman who is carrying two children. Boy up, and girl. Yes, that is their character <laughs> names. <laughs> up, up the river in a post-apocalyptic society, 
where you have to wear blindfolds Could if you're you really outside. Could you call it post-apocalyptic? I mean, really, if it's not really nuclear, could you really yeah. call it? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Oh, it's a, if it's if most of the human... It's a human. Pop, it's a pop, it's a pop, I can't talk. Apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. Apoc- yeah, apocalypse means multiple, multiple apocalypse, which means different scenarios happen at the same time. But what if there's not a different scenario? Well, I mean, apocalypse just means end of the human race. Yeah. It doesn't but mean the there, end of But it's Earth not the human end of the human race. It's just an it, it it invasion. The crazies. It's just All the right. crazies that are left. So to, Ooh, borrow, <laughs> so to borrow from another Morgan Freeman classic, there was an ELE, extinction level event. <laughs> um, by, by actually, EBE. actually, well, I just get to the point where everybody goes, "Oh, it's post-apocalyptic. It's post-apocalyptic." Well, not really. I mean, there's still people alive, and no, yes, nothing but if you watch the movie off. closely, well, there's a there's never a post-apocalyptic movie. Then, yeah, there's and no such thing. Take if, that. If the Heather, entire human Heather, race has to be gone. Heather, you have your hand raised. <laughs> Only because I've tried to say this about four times, and everybody talks over me. Um, there's actually a scene in the movie Bird Box where the guy is talking about um, the creature, whatever yeah. the hell it is, how it shall um, wipe out the world and, re- and remake, remake it. it. So yeah. yes. technically that's what they're doing. The so only maybe it's ones that survive. No, mm-hmm. no, because the only ones that are surviving that aren't covered are the the ones who they can get in their are brain and insane. they're the ones they're getting Tweak to do it. their dirty work yeah. so, yeah. they're so, minions so if we want to reclassify it's not post-apocalyptic it's apocalyptic yeah, yeah. 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 during okay. yeah okay. it is <laughs> okay so the plot summary as per imdb says five years after an ominous unseen presence uh drives most of society to suicide a mother and her two children Make a desperate bid to reach safety. No. That's it. That's kind of interesting because, I mean, how would you kill yourself? The tagline is never lose sight of survival. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 okay, got it. Which actually sounds like a better one for yeah. a quiet place. But, yeah. 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 Sure. <laughs> sure. We'll go with it. Okay. So, do you seriously want to ask us how we'd off ourselves? Why not? Uh, Fast, whatever it is. <laughs> Fast. <laughs> I don't want to suffer. Well, I don't think if they catch you and you're in their stare or you see them, I really think that maybe it's the emotion they feed on and the psychological fear first. Yes. So you're pretty much frozen. If, when you're caught in their presence, they, they as the movie goes on, they start to start playing with voices of Mm-hmm. departed loved ones calling out to them right so honestly it feels like they influence the actions that go on yeah I'm, one one person goes and sits in a car after hearing her dead mother's voice yeah that was must be in the beginning when i missed yeah. it yeah and so yeah i don't know that I, I think that's where the happening part comes in because yeah. you know they were committing suicide because it was being it, it was wasn't. Trees, it wasn't just wind. trees, though. No, it was, it was no. the wind. <laughs> <laughs> All of it. Mother Nature had enough. I all of a sudden got the the Pocahontas on "Colors of the Wind." <laughs> <laughs> that brings out a whole new meaning to that song. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Metacritic gave it a fifty-one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Let's see, Metacritic is an aggregate of only critics, or like only film critics, or is it the general population? General too? population. This is based on 26 okay. reviews. Okay. Um, so I guess in, on Metacritic, you go from 1 to 100, as opposed to just 1 to 10 or whatever. Yes, yes. Um, but there's quite a few reviews here talking about how good Sandra Bullock is. Uh, so... I will just say this to anybody listening who, I mean, at this point, it's been available, and if you have, most people have Netflix, so if you hadn't watched it, chances are good, it's because, A, you're like Katie and I, and you don't like Sandra Bullock. At all. Or, B, you have assumptions about what the plot is, like what type of movie it is, because if I hear Sandra Bullock is in an end of the world tale with kids, I'm thinking that it's going to be a very, like her performance is going to be very endearing and 
dealing nurturing, with the nurturing, and maternal, and all this type mm. of stuff. And this is that the is exact not opposite. what you get. That is not week. what you get. And honestly, <laughs> that is what I it's kind saving of saving grace. To be honest, well, it's what the entire theme of the movie is. Is it deals with mental health because at the very beginning of the movie, she's pregnant. Right. And the, her sister comes and tries to get her to go outside because she's staying indoors all the time yeah, and she's everything. she's become kind of a... She a refu- her man. Yeah. yeah. Agoraphobic. She, she refuses to name her unborn child. Yeah. And it's never... I appreciate that they never just out and out say it, but she has to have clinical depression. The yeah. way they, the way they The way they portray her. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of... Depth. It gives a lot of depth to the story and the character. Well, don't they even kind of talk about that a little bit when she has the doctor's visit there at the beginning? Yes, the doctor. The doctor gives her pamphlets about giving her child up for adoption. Yeah, yes. yeah. Mainly because she hasn't. Um, love, I love the. Ne- I love the next time the doctor shows up. <laughs> she's like what are you, what's your name and then like boy, boy and girl and it's like it's like oh shit awkward yeah, yeah. She just, <laughs> then she just looks at sandra bullock's character like are you Seriously? kidding me yeah. are you, are you they're kidding five me? years old and you <laughs> haven't named them yeah i really haven't had much time we'll be on the river and this is so... i figured they're never going to see themselves or blindfolded so that is a, the doctor's response to when her, the doctor's response to that scene is very uh, unconvincing too. Yeah, it's like no, they actually do have names, which I'm telling them right now. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, that's sweet. Not you're just half-assing and just yeah. giving them names. Right you're just now. coming up with this crap. <laughs> yeah. So your name is okay. Um, so dealing with dealing with similarities because I think there will be like a list of three, three between Quiet Place and Bird Box. You think so? Um, Apocalypse Tale with monsters, right? That's about, and then see, I would, I don't think there's much more than that. Parents, it's a, it's a, well, it's a family yeah, setting, it's a family, a family tale. It's, but but there's always... there's a lot more warmth to a Quiet Place. Yes. It's more. It's quiet much place, more endearing. Quiet place feels hopeful the entire time, whereas Bird Box feels the opposite. Right, like it just feels pessimistic yeah. beyond belief. Right. You really wonder if it's going, how it's going to end. Like, yeah. Yeah. if there could be a world out in in that world. You know what I mean? A successful mm-hmm. world. Yeah. Um, and number three. There's got to be something. Well, you said three. <laughs> the settings are fairly similar. Crowley says that's number three. No, that was, but there's mi- there's At the one end. of them. Sorry, I'm so I'm so sorry, honey. Here, would you like to say something? <laughs> one of them okay. uh, has many varied locations, and one of them doesn't. And it wouldn't to flip flop them. It would make the other movie break. So. <laughs> A quiet place. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that movie breaks if you put it in. Oh yeah, quiet place is Almost, quiet yeah. place is yeah. very deliberate. Yes. Like it's in the midst of all the stuff already happening. You get to see them enter a town in the very beginning, right? Right. And then the majority of it is either them in the woods or back on the farm they live on, right? And then like that's it. Pretty Whereas much. Yeah. Bird Box keeps flipping you back in and after, or like during and after. Yeah. It, um... It seemed almost confusing at times because you're like, wait a minute, where where are we now? And then you're like, okay, was, so this was after, before? It get, it, it's a much bigger scope. Yeah. Like, I have to talk about this because I noticed the budgets. Okay. So everybody's gone on about Quiet Place being pretty good for its $17 million budget. Okay. Which, I got nothing against Quiet Place. Quiet Place is a very effective movie. I really like it. I really like the effects in it and everything. But Bird Box was only $2 million more than that. And it feels like it's about double, like, as far as what's on screen. Yeah, it I think does. a lot of the cinematography had to play into that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, the, I, I don't remember what her name is. We well, had uh, to have... Suzanne... <clears throat> what's her name? You had to have that extra $2 million for all the audio in Bird Box. That would make we, sense. We saved $2 million in audio on A Quiet Place. 
Because we only need to record about 15 minutes of stuff. Well, they've got that one song that they listen to on the Walkman or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. had the IMDb up. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see the, the but the, but, yeah, but the director of this is not one who does these types of movies. Like, I looked at her rest of her filmography, and she does introspective dramas. Yeah, but every oh, once in a while, uh, you Suzanne need to get Beer? out of it. Yeah, there you, you go. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I just think she did a decent job. Of course, Krasinski really didn't have anything to his credit, and he did a good job, too. So. Yeah. Oh. On a quiet Krasinski, place. And he almost didn't take it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, so her filmography is After the Wedding. Yeah, like I said. Better it, World, Brothers, it's Love a, is All You Need. Yeah. It's a lot of dramas. Yeah. Like, that's it, really. <laughs> Which, I mean... Uh, Bird Box is not outside of the realm, but no. it's got a bigger scope than that. They just took. This is just not the romance that's probably in some of these other films mm-hmm. she's done. So, yeah. Um. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> it's not me. No. Oh no! I know what it is. I'm just not going to get up and fix it. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. It will stop. Sorry, there was a God, a bit Paul. of a noise, and we yeah. were all confused for a second because we thought, you know, okay, we, needed we were some being birds attacked or something. Or something. <laughs> no, we needed some birds, or no, I know what. That stay is. quiet, or I didn't know what it was. <laughs> all right, so a, a big portion of the a big portion of the debate around these films, also, like if you happen to go to any any like website that deals with horrors, is the comment section being. That's not even a horror film. Both of these movies get tagged that way all the time. Um, yeah, I think it's more sci-fi than it is horror. Which one? Both of them. Okay. Uh, Bird, Box fe- Bird Box hit on some psychological horror themes, which True. which kind of wrenched it a little bit for me like i can see the argument for either way but honestly i would not be have a problem classifying it that way because when it started to deal with whenever it started to deal with the lunatics who were able to see the creatures and them wanting everybody to see it and all that and i'm kind of glad it did because i mean if you think about it the most puckle up any Paco kind of a lot. None of Whatever. us can say any of, that, any of that, you ever notice that they're never escaped from a mental asylum? They're, you know. Yeah. They're always, oh, he's been the weird one in town, <laughs> or, oh, you know. There, so there's, there's a there's a body count in all these movies of all the people that got left in mental asylums I'm during the saying. apocalypse. <laughs> it's it's kind of nice that it did, mm-hmm. you know. It was it was an interesting twist when they brought it in. Okay, so dictionary dot com yes. says horror is an overwhelming and painful feeling caused by something frightfully shocking, terrifying, or revolting, a shuddering fear to shrink back from, say, like a mutilated corpse in horror. So, in that retrospect, <laughs> you know, yeah. you can classify it horror. Well, I mean, you could classify anything horror that way. This show if the is body horror. counts drop, I mean, yeah. <laughs> we haven't counted what, the bodies. That the body is, the body count in Bird Box is significantly higher than A Quiet Place. Yes. <laughs> and it, it's significantly more terrifying in the middle of Except it, Except for the first so. ten minutes of A Quiet Place. No. That one's not nearly... That. I, I still oh. think the scenario of her coming out of the hospital with the lady hitting her head against the window was more or worse to me than Did a child getting the ripped child? up that right. kid had it coming okay. <laughs> oh damn All right. she just went after All right. it uh listeners spoiler talk here <laughs> might as well if we're gonna if we're gonna use these broad terms we okay always, we always spoiler okay sure so All right. So, explain it. Well, I'm the question I would want to pose to every single person in this group is is were there like what would you consider the creepiest moment of either film? Like what you what do you what was the most tense? It probably is going to end up being the better question. The rapids in Bird Box for me. You think so? I was for thinking, me. I was no, 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 for me because 
if if that was me, I think we would die because I don't do water. So <laughs> I, I would think, I would think the in a quiet place when there's the bathtub scene and the creatures coming up the stairs and it's I, in the bathroom. Yeah, above whenever her. she's giving yeah, birth, when she's giving yeah. birth, I was like, that's uncomfortable. Well, I mean that 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 whole section is just let's torture uh, let's torture em- em- let's torture Emily Blunt and get her a Screen Actors Guild award. Yeah. Exactly. That's what that is. And she has one now, so we're off. <laughs> so, a little bit of trivia about that scene. Mm-hmm. They did that in one take and it was very very intense and then as soon as they called cut Emily Blunt looks up and goes, "So, what's for lunch?" <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. She called lunch. Early. Barbecue. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, oh, on, I'm sorry. That was a very good joke. I'll try what do you to think? Uh, uh, with with the uh, with Quiet Place, I mean, it's hard to argue with that whole section of the movie. What what seemed to uh, play in my mind as the most tense was because it's so tied to the parents and the kids. Was whenever she, whenever the alarm start tripping and she goes down the stairs. Oh yeah, and she ends up like. Stepping on the nail, yes, oh, yeah, on, on the, the nail, nail. Yeah. Yeah. and then scream. and then she can't scream. Starts dragging her bloody foot over to the monitors, trying to find the kids. Right, it was like that part right there. Well, there's also <laughs> the part where uh, Reagan, the the deaf daughter, is she's being haunted by one of these, and she can't hear, so she doesn't know, and she doesn't talk, so she's mm-hmm. not making noise to draw it. It just knows she's there because she's walking mm-hmm. and breathing. Mm-hmm. So that was horrifying to me. Like, that's what stuck out in my mind. Like, that's the part that, of all the others where there was, like, blood and stuff, other things happening, that, where she's being, she's being hunted mm-hmm. and doesn't know it. So... Uh, I, I gotta, I gotta say, when it comes to the uh, the difference between these two movies, I have a feeling that's where the tension, the tension, where that the biggest difference is. Because is, the kids die. Well, it's the the tension related to the tension related to Sandra Bullock is very because of, because of because of her illness. She's very driven. She wants to. She, she it's obligation yeah, for her to take is. care of those but kids. She has a separation. Very a she big is separation separate from those children. So all the tension in Quiet Place is external, mm-hmm. like it's between the family units together, and it's mostly within <clears throat> in, in Bird Box. In Bird Box. Now, as a parent myself, I think in Bird Box the the most tense part of it for me was when they the kids fall out of the boat in the river. Yeah. And no. you can't take your blindfold off, otherwise you may go crazy and never save the kids, but then you gotta find the kids with the blindfold off. I mean it was very, very tense for me. So the only so the the moment that makes me think that I could classify Bird Box as a horror film is when uh Gary is his name? Yeah. Gary? Starts, uh, yeah. Yeah. He, <gasps> He starts unveiling all the sketches of the creatures to reveal yes. that he uh-huh. can one see of the them. Lunatics, and then seen them. puts birds in the freezer. Starts unveiling all. Uh, starts yeah. un, uh, covering the windows. I, I think you would also have to include the big freezer in the store scene in that, making it a horror yeah. film. Yeah. 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 Okay. Not the freezer. That was the, the door finger. to the. Uh, that was the door to the. Shout out to get, Shout out to getting little Rel from. Uh, Get out in this movie too. Yeah, yeah. good for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. There was a freezer in the store where the butcher block was, or something. Yeah, yeah, that was the the, the back of the store. Yeah. It was the yeah. loading dock. Yeah. Was the loading dock. Yeah. yeah, I want to show you something. Mm-hmm. Can't you see? <laughs> yeah, so I, I would include that into the whole. Yeah. What can make it seem more a horror movie than? Yeah. Right. That almost takes on the feeling of the mist, though. It does, mm-hmm. which is a horror scene. film. Absolutely. The, the Mist is a horror <laughs> oh, film. I love, the, I love The Mist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and for those that, that shunned the TV series, shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> shame on you. It was a great series. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Th- th- I would... Probably say if if we were going to try and do comparison, it, it would seem more a little more comparable to a quiet place. 
mm-hmm. than the happening. I mean, I can see where it comes from, you know, with the whole psychological thing and the, the, the committing suicides and yeah, people being driven yeah. to commit suicide. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, There's also the traveling with Mark Wahlberg and the kids. And they're looking for hot dogs. And Zoe and Zoe Deschanel waving to cameramen. Yeah. In, yeah. In the shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> they're, they're so, they're, and the, I, oh, wait. There are shots of wind in both movies. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. was... There, 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 lots, there, of, there, lots of wind. Yes. yes. The there trees we go. rustled. There, that's exactly that's the same I movie. I will say that Quiet Place's wind is better. The other one looks very forcey. Like, as in, like, you know what Turn I mean? The fan, like, make the wind. ball of force, like. Star Wars things. horror movie. Yeah. What? Yes. Yeah. Like, that's the, that's the kind of, that's the kind of, like, elemental look you have elemental. in Bird Box. But you have a very just, things are running past. Like, something is moving very well, Mr. quickly. Dr- and Mr. Director things. over here had some problems with the color. I did. I did. A lot. <laughs> and, and for some reason, in a bird box, all the trees seem greener than they should be. Oh, yeah. They were, like, super it was, like, saturated. super saturated green. It, and then, it, lo- it looks like travel shots of somebody that has Photoshop and a Canon. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yes, yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but, you know. And or, they just have that one filter that they love. Yeah. Or just well, inspirational posters. Yeah. So. It's like, or like or like uh, my wife's sister. You just got to spam that yellow filter on Everything. your head. Oh my <laughs> God. Now, now, I will say it was smart on the cinematography department to use that kind of a yellowish, orangish filter through most of the film because you are supposed to be in a place that's using basically standard light bulbs mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, as opposed to allowing natural light in because you're hiding yourself from them so you can't see them and whatever. So I think it was smart on the cinematography department to to s- simulate that indoor light. Because you've ever taken a photo or something with your camera indoors, it looks very orangish and yellowish. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah. I the, the main thing, I the main takeaway I got from this is I, lo- I liked both movies, but I was excited for Quiet Place. I had no expectations about this movie. True. No. Yeah. None whatsoever. Nope. I mean... I honestly, we probably would not have watched it if we weren't going to talk about it for the show. I would have stayed the heck away from it if we, if we honestly, I do not like Sandra Bullock. I was Bullock. intrigued okay, honestly, with the amount of stuff that I've seen on it, but. But what? But go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Aww. Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> oh, my God. We need to I save this for the know, Valentine's okay, so, Day. Yeah. <laughs> We don't speak of V-Day. Oh. Anyways. Um, it sounds like a disease. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you get enough, or get around enough men during Valentine's Day, it kind of is. It's like, okay, somebody poisoned all their water. Um, they get weird. They get really weird. Okay, you were going to say. I, happening is... Honestly, I watched it and I was like, okay, so Mother Nature got pissed and took out revenge and wiping us off the face of the planet. Yeah. And then I watched Bird Box. I had no intention of watching Bird Box, mm-hmm. honestly, because I saw the trailer when it dropped and I was like, eh. Okay. Mm, didn't really blow my skirt up. Yep. Honestly, even missing Not through even half of the it, scene? I was just like, <sighs> okay. This is post apocalyptic. We've seen this. Oh, look, stuff's moving. Oh, look. They're going to die. Oh. Hey, Zool, don't be messing with the mixer. Yeah. <laughs> Zool is trying to get to you, Heather. Mm. Look up, darling. What's up? What's up, Cooper? <laughs> he says, you're going to die. You took your blindfold off. <laughs> uh, so, I... I mean... <laughs> I honestly, honestly, I mean, it's like, it's like uh, Katie and I have said, though, it's... The the most the most unique thing about this it really is the mental health issue because it gets uh, dropped in movies but it's usually like here are the crazy people well, their complications okay, for the plot but if yeah, you notice it much. happening his wife was depressed too and psychotic but you know she had the mental health on the piece too I'm not saying one because we they rarely touch down on what it was and the happening. Hmm. What are we, which? I think it was his girlfriend on his wife. Maybe it was his girlfriend. I don't know the woman that's with him in in Zoe Deschanel. I don't know. 
I don't know. Yeah. All I in know the is there were leaves rustling and because he rushes home himself. to try and get her or something. Oh, that's like that. the mist. No, it's in happening. I don't remember. I remember that. I remember that. I had in the to mist, play you the clip earlier. Anyways, um, earlier. I mean, I've got my media drive. It's it's in there. Where in the, there. Is that? in the mist is that? Not in the mist. It's mist? in the happening. In the mist. You, you don't remember it in the mist? The uh, wind. Well, it's at the end. The window got broken. His wife did not make it. Spoilers mm. for the mist. <laughs> she got left behind. Uh, when they drove back by the house. Okay. 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 Yeah, I was like, there was nothing at the beginning before he goes to the store indicating she had any mental illness. No. Not, I'm not talking about the happening on, or the mist. I'm talking about the happening. I know. He said the mist. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so breaching We've back the to the discussion you, that we had earlier, you were talking about the two writings of the both. Um, yes, and their time periods and stuff. <laughs> yes, uh, the the two writings indicate that. Like all any comparison that you might have for any of these things is all coincidence, which I mean speaks to it. If you watch any of these movies, they're all just like surface level similar, but execution different. Because, yeah. uh, so, uh, Bird Box is based on a novel that got bought by Harper Collins, I believe, in 2012, okay. optioned by Universal in. 13 and published in the next year okay. so uh meanwhile john krasinski reportedly started writing a quiet place in 2013 yeah and somewhere along the lines we've got another movie coming out called the silence which also features creatures that attack sound and a deaf child that book came out in 2015 so after Krasinski started writing a screenplay, but before the movie came out. Yeah, yeah. So there's a whole lot of similar themes and plots and everything. Oh, yeah. I mean, when it, com- when it comes down to it, truly original storylines and films are very hard to come by at oh, this yeah. point. Oh, yeah. Well, Especially whenever we make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of films per right. year. <laughs> well, you, and you look at, you look at, trends and you can see their, survival their, movies are big thank you walking dead yeah well i mean even if you go back into the 90s it's like you know we had armageddon and then oh now look look here's deep impact and then and mm-hmm. here's another asteroid movie and it's just like they're, they're they clump these things together like mm-hmm. for some reason you know, three years prior, five people decided they were going to make a film on this one subject. The most deliberate was whenever DreamWorks became a company because it was a company created out of spite. Yeah. So that's the reason that Ants and Bugs Life came out at the exact same time. Yeah. And yeah. Like all those Pixar DreamWorks movies that were similar. What, yeah. was, what was the other one? Um, it was one about lions. And, and tigers? Like, no. And bears. It was an animated one. Mm-hmm. It was like. One was... Madagascar? No, I don't think it was the same time as Madagascar. But anyways, it was like, it may have been. I don't know. But the second movie, the one that didn't get all the hype, was the better of the two movies anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, (laughs) it's a hard line choice between Armageddon and Deep Impact. If you like, if, I if like you, Armageddon because it makes me laugh, but Deep Impact is a better story. Yes, oh. yes, I'll agree with that one <laughs> totally. Yeah, if you so. if you want if you like an action film, Armageddon's the way to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you like Steve Buscemi, Armageddon's the way to go. They both feature a bunch of characters that die, but I don't. I dare say there's only one death that anybody's going to get broken up about in Armageddon. <laughs> Which one was that? The Just, last one? Yeah. <laughs> the very last death in the movie? <laughs> Take um, care of her. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Bye-bye. Um, no, see, I was a little more... <laughs> that I is got the, it. I think that's the prettiest way that Bruce Willis has ever been ridden. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think so, too. Bruce Willis, you need, this, you need this signature of your own name. Yes, <laughs> <Yep>. yes. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think the death of the older astronaut and the impact was a little more tear jerking. Well, I 
I think the most tear jerking part of it, Deep Impact, I'm sorry, was where the guy, he's blind, and then his wife is there. Yeah, that one is pretty. Yeah. He, that one's bad. Tay Leone hugging her father on the beach. Yeah. Oh, that was bad too. Yeah. Yeah. I was kind of happy to see her go. She's not one of my favorite actresses. Still, actresses. still <laughs> gripping, and then her yeah. crying daddy, and the wave yeah, crashes bit. in. It's like, bit. yeah. That's that's rough. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a, there was a lot more to that one than <laughs> Armageddon, but uh, you just didn't get Steve Buscemi riding a nuclear weapon. So. so now that we're dealing with meteorites in our discussion of yeah. Quiet Place and uh, Bird Box, what's everybody's favorite apocalypse tale then? Um. Ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah, because really for me it has to be depending on my mood. Like some of my some. If I'm feeling action oriented, I really love the Mad Max. Series. Is there one that unnerves you? I know. I think I know what her. I think I know what her choice is. You really? Um. Because okay. it it'll probably surprise me? you. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Can't think of one offhand that unnerves me, but if I'm in an action feel. Mad Max, I really like those that series. Um <laughs> or Cyborg, I really like that one. Children yeah. of Men. Oh. I don't know that one. There it is. <laughs> is that yours too? Oh, uh, it's the one of two. Oh. Yeah. I have yeah. one that's a stupid movie, but I like it anyways, and then yeah. that one so What's the stupid movie? <laughs> the day after tomorrow. <laughs> oh my god. I love that movie. Yes. That's oh, okay, a stupid well, movie. That is an awesome movie. I know the one that, I love that movie. I know the unnerving one though. Which Why? one? Uh Ah Crowley says no you don't. <laughs> Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Yep. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I I, I, sh- I showed her the US trailer, and I was like, and in like midway through, I'm like, oh, this that's a body snatchers vibe, and Katie was like, why are you showing me this? <laughs> yeah, we got someone else that wants to okay. partake in this. All right, let's hear it. My favorite one is the Z Nation. <gasps> oh yeah, okay, yeah. okay not yeah. a movie, TV show. Yeah, nice. totally. Yeah, get that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm yeah. that I'm that mom. I let my 13 year old yeah. watch. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I mean, Zombie there's strippers a lot worse things that I, he could be I, wor- watching. Yeah. I'm just saying. Honestly, I like that one better than I like Walking Dead. Yeah, Zombie yeah. Come strippers. at me. <laughs> <laughs> another one that, that unnerves him. me a little is hard to get out of the rug. The, another one that kind of unnerves me is the Book of Eli. That, I like that one, one. I like that good. one a lot, but it's very. It's just the old couple. That's yeah. the, oh, that's people. The old, yeah. yeah, they eat people. Yeah. Drink your tea, that's darling. The only thing. Yeah, <laughs> drink your <her> tea. <laughs> now, if we're talking favorite, it would have to be um, The World's End and Shaun of the Dead. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, World's End is definitely qualifies. Definitely Absolutely. qualifies by the end. Oh, yeah. 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 So, we don't we're going to get to The World's End. Well, I mean, the fun one would be Night of the Comet. Yes, I was, no, I was just yeah. going to say, yeah. if, you go, if you go sci-fi, then yeah, Night of the Comet. Dune. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Still one of my favorites. Hey, the spice is slow. It does, and it, it's still to do this one of my favorite movies, but I do agree. I love At World's End. The World's mm-hmm. End. Mm-hmm. The World's End. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I love the twins. <laughs> but they're there. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Swallowed uh-huh. my ring. You got red on you. Just say it. You know? <laughs> I, saw, I, I saw just Charlie love it all the time. I just remember <laughs> when Shaun of the Dead came out. You and the girls watched it about half a dozen times, and I'm like, oh my god, again. How did you survive the mother's death that many times? Yeah. Yeah, I know. It was just, it was rough. He'd go outside and smoke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, here comes mom gonna die. I got a cigarette. A cigarette. <laughs> Darn. Yeah. He was gonna Not shoot yet. my mom. <laughs> We haven't She's watched not that your one. Mom. We haven't watched Shaun of the Dead nearly as many times as we've watched uh, Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz because yeah. of that. But I'm yeah. I've it's watched called a shortcut, Hot Fuzz don't you know? Lot. <laughs> it's called a shortcut. Queen. Haven't you heard one? Kill the queen. Yeah. What? You want to be a big cop in a small town? Go fuck off to this model village. <laughs> 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 
Be one of us. <laughs> one of us. The greater good. <laughs> the greater <laughs> good. <laughs> oh, my God. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. Um, bird Box. Yeah. A Quiet Place. The Happening. The Mist. mist. All similar. Yeah. All similar. Very, very similar. Very similar, but also very different in their own way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which doesn't make and that one better than the other. No, I think can't. it depends on who's directing and filming it. Yeah. And because as far you can't exactly. No. They're not apples to apples. Out no. of those four, though, specifically, the I think the, the one that has the box, most touching, hardest ending to watch is The Mist. It's got to be The Mist. The Mist. It's got All that day. total All Greek day. kind of. Tragedy. Tragedy ending. Ending. It's tragic. I will give it that, and I, it's an ending I really like. I think um, it's done very well, and it and it's done very well. It is very polarizing. Yes, mm-hmm. it is intensely it's, polarizing. It's <laughs> very traumatic too, especially if you're a parent. Yeah, because you, you have. You it all. Have to sit it and all. Think, do I make that decision? If I'm, if I'm decision. going to be fair and balanced, because I do like the ending, but if I'm going to be fair and balanced and play devil's advocate, I can't argue when people say that personally, they would have like they wouldn't they wouldn't have rushed to pulling the trigger that you know pulling the trigger. I'm like that is a that is a personal moral call that uh-huh. is yeah. gonna be that'll be where you're at and mm-hmm. if you're a survivalist mindset mm-hmm. you probably are not gonna be and they do, weren't yeah but none of those characters are and that no. are in that car at the end of but that movie here's the flip side of that coin could you do it Mm-mm. nope knowing that if you killed yourself your child would survive in Oh no, that's an easy one. That's an easy one. I would kill myself all day to save Charlie. Yeah, yeah. I could not kill Charlie. It, mm-hmm. I couldn't do it. There, there is no way you could force me to do that. Yeah, none, none. Mm-hmm. The most spiteful thing about that ending is the is the woman with her two kids on the back of the transport. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. just gets to <laughs> live. Just, yeah, that kind of hits home. It's just oh. like oh. <laughs> should have stayed. Yeah. Well, should have gone with her. Yeah, because yeah. that's us. what she did. Is she walked out into the mist and yep. to go get her kids? Want yes, anyone ni- walk a mist. nice lady home? Isn't there anybody here? <laughs> nope. Yeah. Mm. I got my own kid to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the one. That's the interesting thing that this, the way that. <laughs> each of those movies looks at parenthood is very different. Yes. Um, So you have the, I would kill my child to keep them, um, to keep them from suffering. And one, Yeah. you have another that two that are all about survival. Right. Mm -hmm. And, but they're, one of them has a, has a loving family dynamic. And the other is being, the other two children are being raised by a mother who has have is having trouble emotion, emotionally connecting to those children? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think she had trouble emotionally connecting to anything. Yes. Oh, I except it's for Tom she and was, her art. Yeah, she's she's depressed is the issue. Yeah. And yeah. That, no, I know. I and know. That, that was the thing. That was another thing that it's not delineated enough. It, we know that all of the lunatics, all of the crazy people that come and force people's eyes open, are yeah, from the asylum. Say, yeah. No, but, no, no. no. No, and that's because what they not say all from of the beginning. Them. No, that's what he says. But not all of those people came from that asylum. There's true. too many of them. That's true. Right. So it, it's, I, th- I think that what is the other movie where it picks and chooses who? Uh, um, I. My question is: is if these people originally come from the asylum, and that's where you get your crazies that are are exposing people. Because that's what it's. That's what they're saying. That's what like, one person who the, the guy also who is one of them. Yeah, so he says he yeah. self-identifies. Northwood. What? And, what is the? There's another movie that does that where it picks and chooses who it's the host. Who? Doom. Doom. I know it's a terrible movie, but in that movie, oh, yeah. the the it, thing picks and chooses. They're like it. Who picked, it wants to just kill would, and who it, it wants would to. Pick, it wouldn't infect. Yeah. 
like this guy, but it infected this guy, like goat. It infected him, even though he was super I, churchy and all that stuff. But, I don't. You know what I mean. I don't think it's a matter of. Like cor- of course, it, couldn't that be along the lines of like alien or not aliens? Um, oh, the one where she is an alien and she goes to find the perfect mate. Species. Species. There you go. I knew the boys would know. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, you could almost say it's very similar to species, where you know it's trying to find the perfect host to help conduct what it needs to what get I'm done. Saying. Which I don't no. know what that's what I'm saying. It's choosing Reproduce. what I'm saying, trying to say is yeah. that no. it's I want it to come out and say that there are good and bad mental illnesses, which is basically what it does, anyways. I don't um, think you're ever going to get that, baby. <laughs> no, but the problem is they're saying that without saying that. True. So if you're going to say that, say and it. you're going to say it in front of people who have mental illnesses, then come say tell it. us who the bad people are, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm, I'm a bad person. I'm just going to come in here and, <laughs> and do some bad things so you know exactly who I am. So, well, the... Well, you know, we're all Southern, honey. I, we don't, think, we don't I, condone I crazy. That, we just put it on the front porch and give it a Long Island iced tea. I think that would be one step forward, two steps back. If you started, if you, if you, uh. But that's what it does. I don't think so. I think it's exactly what it does. Oh, hell, it's about to throw down. <laughs> because that is what he says. Those are his words. Do you that trust him? criminally insane. It doesn't matter. But it's not like some of the series you have that out there, what, like, um, Into the Badlands, okay. where really, you know, the guy, the person that's supposed to be the good guy and the leader of one of the factions or whatever is really the bad guy. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as opposed to this guy walks in and all of a sudden it's like, look, don't you see? Don't you see? You're a bad guy. We know that. We yeah. Know it. Well, it means it's the nation. It's the notion of an unreliable narrator, which is old, as old as written fiction. Yeah, but here's the yeah. thing: is we're we're we're, watch, we're watching something, and we need some sort. We already have a, an unreliable unreli- narrator in our not narrator, but main character. This is true because she is completely uh, yeah. divorced herself from emotional contact with the rest of humanity. Yeah, but the lin- the, but the lens of the yeah. film doesn't really go through her. No. Like it is, it is at firmly outside of her. Yeah, it's around her. It's she around. She is the main you're, you're, character. You're, it's a, this this film is is basically third party view. Yeah, you're there, mostly witnessing there's as no, opposed to providing it there's through absol- her experience. There's absolutely no introspection on her. No, like it. But like, you know, like she's acting. She's so acting. She, she's, she's acting. Sure, but the the. The audience doesn't get privy to her thoughts or no. any of her inner workings or anything. She's like not that. journaling. We're not hearing right. her talk in her head or anything like that. Mm, exactly. So there's nothing for her to cloud. Like no, we, we get it presented and it's right there. Yes. And there, there you have to make your own decision on: is she really that sick, or is she just depressed? Yeah, depressed? Is she just emotionally withdrawn? You know, did she have a traumatic experience that kept her from wanting to be around people Mm -hmm. anymore? I mean, there's there's numerous ways you could take that character. There's multiple things, and that's why none of it's delineated. We just have good crazies and bad crazies, and that's kind of (laughs) I yeah. But then some of the good crazies go off the deep end and become bad crazies, and then some of the bad crazies decide to be good, and you know, then they're the good crazies. So in the well, in real life, sure, but not in the movie. (laughs) We have when I'm talking about crazy, I'm talking about either out of the middle of asylum or they're depressed. So which is good and which is bad? I think that leaves it up to interpret on your own. I think it is a very progressive and compassionate view of mental health disorders. This I did true. not. Not the way they they not not whatever they name the anything bad else that goes in that in depth, like any other movie where they don't just immediately go, this bitch crazy. No, what? Not well, in the her. happening, they don't. They I'm don't touch about... base on her being depressive, even though there is no character there. Like in the happening, if you if it's who I'm thinking of, Zoe Deschanel's character. <sighs> 
She doesn't have a character. She's talking to the crew the entire movie. She yeah. is. She is, she is not. <laughs> There's a, no performance. She does not, not give a shit. No. She's in that movie. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> she does not. Okay. All right. So. I don't like her. I like that movie, but I laugh at her performance the entire and time. there's the deep end of the shallow end. Okay. All but. right. So, okay. Bird Box. Final opinions. Final opinions. I'd watch it again. Yeah, I, I, I too. I give thumbs up to both Bird Box and Quiet Place. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. If you haven't seen either one of them and you thought that you, you thought that maybe there was something that was keeping you from it or whatever, give it a shot. I'll say that Bird Box had some major disadvantages just because of my personal um, dislike for certain. <laughs> aspects of the movie um not just the movie itself but uh, her performance was good she she was excellent that's the best performance she's given ever since um, the 90s yeah ever. at least since the 90s since demolition man and speed <laughs> right yeah yeah <laughs> definitely anyway. not miss congeniality but... <laughs> oh, God. it's my mother's um, favorite movie <laughs> i uh <laughs> i i would say there. myself definitely Without a doubt, watch A Quiet Place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're bored, check out Bird Box. <laughs> I, should, okay. I mean, it was good. Different but strokes it was, different uh, folks. It's not what... Even with all the hype around it, which I think that's really all it was, is it, it just didn't... It didn't meet all the... Everything that was out there about it. Oh, this is the most watched film on Netflix. It, and this is, you know... That would be that, 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 that's a that's a whole other debate to talk about the idea of popular at the theater versus Netflix popular right. because most people that have a Netflix subscription view those movies as free. So True. you say this brand new a twenty million dollar budget movie just dropped with an A list star, and you go, oh, well, it's free for me to watch. <laughs> it's like, or you spend. 10 to $15 per month, but yeah. you know. But it's free. the theater. <laughs> <laughs> nice theater. <laughs> it's just your snacks were cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and the, the Don't seat forget, was comfier. You have comfier. to put them in the regulated clear you, purse. You got, to sit in, you got to sit in your stained uh, underwear, so yeah, you're good. Yeah, and you're your good. ease chair, so. <laughs> yeah. You got to lay back oh in the lazy boy. <laughs> <laughs> like Chad is right now. I didn't, I didn't have to get dressed to watch this. <laughs> right? Uh, so anyway, uh, give us your opinions on you know what you think about comparatively the two movies or three or however many mm-hmm. we listed. Um, do, do survival movies count as horror movies even? Yeah. There's another question for you. Is surviving your fear? <laughs> then yes. <laughs> yes, I'm very I scared of surviving. I survive mine every day. It's called raising teenagers. Oh. I'm very yeah. scared of surviving, yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, don't forget to check us out on our uh, website. That's fearcentral.net. Uh, from there, you can get access to all of our social media networks, uh, such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, mm-hmm. Tumblr, whatever else we have. Um, don't forget to subscribe to us on Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio. Tons of them. All those links are there as well. Uh, hopefully soon we'll have a new surprise for everyone about where you can subscribe to us, but mm-hmm. still in the works. Um, am I forgetting something? What am I forgetting? Oh, yes. If you uh, enjoy things that go beyond what we talk about on the show we do have a new area on the website called beyond the show mm-hmm. uh you can click on there it's uh, kind of like a um, bloggy article things that we we come up with it's beyond bloggy. what we talk about yeah bloggy <laughs> you gotta be bloggy i believe the term is web loggy a web bloggy <laughs> web blog where blog came from yeah web log was the original I name i got that but yeah. Just the way you said that was just... We're bloggy. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm an IT man from 1998. Did you turn it off, turn it on. <laughs> Come save the queen. Uh, so anyway, don't forget to check Knock. us out. Subscribe to us. Definitely go on to whichever platform you listen to us on and give us a rating and a review, and that will help boost us up and allow a lot, much more 
people to enjoy what you're enjoying. Um, so we will catch you all again next week. We we now have plans. So yes, we we'll do. know what we're going to be bringing to you every week. Don't forget that we are going to be bringing back games. And uh, we'll, I'm forgetting something. I know I am. That's why I'm hesitating to finish. Are you forgetting that everybody should say, stay scared? <gasps> there it is. That's what it was. So y'all have a good week. And as always, st- stay scared. <laughs> <laughs> Fear Central is a product of Thoughtbox Studios. For more information, visit thoughtboxstudios.com.